Apple's September event has leaked. The iPhone 16 is finished, the official invites are coming out soon, but we already know the big secrets that Apple doesn't want us to know quite yet. Sorry, Tim. So in just a few days from now, the invites will officially go out, the hype is going to build, the tweets are going to start, and everyone is gonna get super excited for Apple's big September event. And while there is supposed to be a lot to unpack here and a lot to talk about, let me start quickly with just by sort of breezing over the things that won't be coming at the September event, maybe coming a little later on this fall, just so you can get your expectations set for what will and won't be happening. For example, one thing that we likely will not see at the September event, but we could see later on at maybe a second fall event would be any sort of new Macs. We actually have got a couple of new rumors saying that Apple might be making a significant overhaul to their smallest mighty mini Mac, the Mac mini, in a really interesting way, maybe taking the form factor down to like half the size of the current model maybe to something around the size of an Apple TV. That, that had been sort of a rumor for a while, speculating that Apple could make a much cheaper, smaller Mac. The real question here is what this could be priced at, because I think right now we're around 500 bucks, correct me if I'm wrong down below, for the Mac mini. So if Apple could get this down maybe to 400 bucks or 300 bucks, 300 bucks for a Mac mini would be crazy. That would be very cool to see. We're hearing right now a pretty big redesign. Also M4 would be in this Mac mini along with an M4 Pro variant. Um, so that's gonna be really cool to see, but likely will not be here in September, maybe in October or November, depending on who you believe in the Apple rumor mill. Same goes for a few other M4 Macs we could see later on this year as well. MacBook Pro should be getting the M4 treatment along with the iMac. There was some speculation that maybe we'd see a surprise Mac Studio or Mac Pro update, but that likely isn't going to come until next year, which is sort of sad to see. Of course, those are likely the even more high-end chips for the M4 series. Um, so that's sort of what we could see later on this fall and the next year. Really, September is all gonna be about iPhone. Something else very interesting that we won't be seeing are, speaking of iPhones, two new iPhones that should be sort of setting the stage for a really exciting 2025. One is the all new iPhone SE 4, Apple's budget uh, sort of uh, more affordable end iPhone that uh, by all accounts seems to be just getting better and better and better. This is gonna have a more modern iPhone 14 or maybe even an iPhone 15 style design that have a 6.1 inch OLED display, a 48 megapixel camera, it would have the action button, it would have USB-C, and yes, Apple's cheapest, you know, lowest end iPhone would in fact have presumably full support for Apple intelligence. Then comes some super interesting news about the iPhone 17, which we thought was gonna be this sort of higher end iPhone ultra we were super excited about, but we kept hearing this word iPhone 17 slim or this code name reference and everyone just sort of assumed that was just sort of nothing. It was gonna be a high end iPhone, but now maybe that name was on to something. According to Mark Gurman over at Bloomberg, Apple looks to be taking a different strategy with this iPhone 17 Slim. They tried the mini route that obviously, you know, flopped after two years. They tried the plus route with the 15 plus and the upcoming 16 plus, but that by all accounts is no commercial success. So it seems like this year, Apple's gonna go a bit more on the higher end side and actually making like an iPhone Air. In fact, this might be an iPhone 17 Air. This would sit presumably between the two lines. So it's not exactly as high end as a 17 Pro or 17 Pro Max, but also a little bit more sort of uh, premium than an iPhone 17, but well, I guess no plus. So it's just gonna be the iPhone 17 there. This would sort of sit in the middle as a larger screen, sort of really thin, lightweight iPhone that sort of would give you a bit more of a premium feel, but not with the power of the Pro Max. Interestingly enough, this does sort of make sense as to the rumors we heard about this only having one camera, maybe just one higher end camera on the back. We heard some other camera upgrades could be coming. Of course, it'd likely have the action button and USB-C and all that stuff. But we had heard over and over again that Apple is really focusing on a thinner design for this phone. It wouldn't have um, titanium. It would probably uh, be aluminum, uh, which would be really interesting to see. And now if these air rumors are correct, 
looks like that sort of makes sense. And this would be the iPhone 17 Air, which um, for all those who want something uh, sort of in the middle there, uh, this would be super exciting to see. Though my question would be what pricing would be, given that there's not a huge amount of play between the price of a lower end iPhone and a higher end iPhone. I wonder where this fits, but um, I guess we're gonna have to wait and see when more leaks come out on this inevitably over the next couple of months. But while all of that is up in the air, get it there. Um, the iPhone 16 is really anything but because as we get closer to the official unveil and announcement of this phone, really there's not a whole lot left to the imagination. So here's what's gonna happen at Apple's uh, September event happening like in less than a month from now. So according to multiple sources, including the GOAT, Mark Gurman over at Bloomberg, here's what you can expect. The iPhone 16 lineup will have four phones. iPhone 16, 16 Plus, 16 Pro, and 16 Pro Max. Do not expect any major design change here because basically like the 15 and the 14 and the 13 and the 12, you're getting a very very minor change, if any, to the exterior of this phone. Really the only cosmetic change is on the 16 and 16 plus, as the cameras will go from a sort of diagonal orientation to a vertical orientation, likely to support spatial video recording. So you can play back your iPhone videos on Apple Vision Pro, which spoiler alert, I recorded some spatial videos on my 15 Pro Max and um, videos weren't all that great. The other big change across the board is two new buttons for the entire iPhone 16 lineup. Well, I guess one new button and two buttons on every phone. Uh, one is the action button sort of moving down the line to every phone. So if you care about that, that'll be on every iPhone 16 model. And then also sort of this new capture button, which Mark Gurman sort of confirms in his latest newsletter that this will function like the camera button on a DSLR. And for this, let me grab a prop. So according to what we know right now, this is going to function like sort of the, is it the shutter button? Whatever this main capture button is on a traditional camera where it's sort of pressure sensitive. So if you sort of lightly like give it a half press, it's going to focus in on your subject if autofocus is enabled, which probably will be on your iPhone. And then a full press is actually going to take the picture. So it's going to sort of have multiple functions depending on the amount of pressure you're giving the button. Also, because this is more of sort of a square rectangle, I guess I, not square, rectangular cutout on this phone, you'll have the ability to sort of swipe from left to right or right to left in order to what Gurman says, you'll be able to sort of have zoom control over. So you can basically do your zooming and your focusing and your capturing just from one button, which is great. Though I guess you can switch between the different lenses, which is kind of nice, but the digital zoom isn't all that good. I guess it's gonna be an easier way to capture photos on your iPhone. So instead of having to sort of um, rely on just having one button here to uh, activate sort of the digital shutter and take your picture, you now sort of have a little bit of like a bar here to sort of zoom and take your picture and focus and all that. I, I'm curious to see how Apple sort of markets this. I'm sure they're gonna make it a big deal. Um, but as of now, it's kind of cool, but doesn't sound all that exciting. But it will be again on every iPhone 16 coming in just a month from now. Of course, one of the hallmark features here, Apple Intelligence will be on all iPhone 16 models. So you don't have to go pro to get the Apple Intelligence feature that will be here, but likely right now it won't launch with these phones. Unless Apple delays the launch of the iPhone 16 to October, which they could do, but we're hearing right now they likely won't. Um, you will not get Apple intelligence, at least all the features on day one, as it seems like the official release of that feature set, or at least the complete feature set, is being pushed back to later on in the fall, likely in October. Uh, also, a couple other cosmetic changes or really big features to know about. Uh, 48 megapixel ultra wide camera on the 16 Pro and Pro Max, that'll be cool to see. And also some slightly larger screens on the Pro phones this year. 16 Pro is gonna go from 6.1 one to 6.3 and Pro Max is gonna go to 6.9 from 6.7. In terms of Apple Watch upgrades, really the star of the show is likely going to be this all new Apple Watch Series 10, sort of the special 10th anniversary edition, which likely won't be getting the big redesign we originally thought it would be, but we'll be getting some nice sort of smaller upgrades and details here. Likely we'll have a larger display, two larger display options here for the Apple Watch Series 10. Also some sort of new 
new watch band attachment mechanism. Uh, so that will be different on the new Apple Watch, though I'm, we don't know yet if it's gonna be backwards compatible with old bands. We don't know that just yet. Um, and then likely as far as any groundbreaking feature here in terms of health features or fitness features, likely won't be coming due to some issues with reliability testing for those sensors. So mainly a bit of a cosmetic upgrade and a bigger screen for the Series 10, but likely not the big overhaul or some round uh, uh, displayed Apple Watch that we'd all love to see. Um, that is not coming. In terms of an all new Apple Watch SE, that could be coming as well with a smaller screen. I think typically uh, should be sort of the same screen size we've had in the past, though Apple's gonna really move to differentiate these by doing smaller screens on the SE and higher end and larger screens on the Apple Watch Series 10 and the Ultra. Uh, also, the new Apple Watch SE could be built with a plastic body. And then the Apple Watch Ultra 3 might be coming this year, but according to Apple analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, really no major or even minor upgrades coming to this watch. No cosmetic features are coming, likely just a new processor, but no big features. So probably just a little bit of a spec bump like what we got last year with the Apple Watch Ultra 2. That's really the story for the Apple event coming in a couple of weeks from now. iPhone 16 with more mostly minor upgrades, couple of Apple Watch upgrades, and uh, of course, as always uh, is the case every year, bigger and more exciting things coming with the iPhone uh, next generation in the following year in 2025. So I'm curious, what are your thoughts on this? Will you be upgrading to the iPhone 16? Are you waiting for the iPhone 17? Does an iPhone 17 Air make sense to you? Does it sound appealing or not? Drop a comment down below and let me know. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for your support. I am Robert Rosenfeld from the Apple Circle. And I'll see you all in the next one.